Greetings, I am Dr. Jamel D. Carter, the president and CEO of the Canis Consulting Group Incorporated, where we are a full service management and educational consulting practice, where we assist organizations like yours align human capital with organizational strategy. We have a variety of services available to you and your team, such as executive coaching, human resources and organizational development consulting, market research, intensive boot camps, such as our nonprofit formation, business growth, grant writing, fundraising, advancement, and institutional development. In addition, we offer growth circles, which are intimate groups for leaders to come together for professional development, peer encouragement, and up-to-date best practices and research. Join a growth circle today we have growth circles for CEOs, entrepreneurs, pastors, executive directors, and educational leaders. This is episode 27 of the Canis Consulting Group's Executive Edge podcast, your source for encouragement, news, information, and commentary, all designed to assist Christian leaders and executives uh, to thrive in both life and career. I invite you to like, follow, subscribe, comment, or share. If you like what you hear, and if you're unable to wait for our weekly podcast, I recommend you sign up for one of our alerts and begin to receive breaking news in the world of higher education, nonprofits, business, entertainment, leadership, politics, health, biotech, and pharmaceuticals. To do so, call our offices at 1-800-418-5350. That number once again, 1-800-418-5350. As we do, we are going to begin this podcast with a moment in God's word. If you're able to do so, I ask that you bow your heads with me in prayer if not, let's just meditate on how great and awesome God is. Dear Lord, we come before your throne humble and submitting to your will. We ask that you have your way in our lives. Lord, we pray that you'll remove any doubt, any fear. Lord, we're praying that you will purge and cleanse us of iniquity. We cast down any idol worship that we may have allowed to enter into our lives. Lord, we pray that you'll remove the stench of sin within our nation. Lord we, Lord, we ask that you order the steps of believers. Draw us closer to you. Help us to hear clearly your voice. Lord, encourage those that are currently feeling defeated. Lord, we pray that those who are mentally drained, oh God, will find that you are able to take them higher. Lord, we pray that you will heal today that you will comfort today, that you will provide on today. Lord, deliver today. In Christ's matchless name, we seal this prayer. Amen. So our text comes from Psalm 51, verses 1 through 7. And they read, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, According unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only have I sinned and done evil in thy sight that thou mayest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I have shapen, behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou darest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part, though shall, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be cleansed. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. And Lot stated, failure does not have to be final. If we can talk for a theme for our moment in God's word, it will be place it all behind you. 
When we travel, many times we carry bags along. The same can be said with life. Many are carrying things on their journey that are not necessary for their long-term progression and, and advancement in God. Some are carrying doubt, worry, fear, excuses, justification, pain, and heartache. But we have to understand that God is willing to wash you of your failure and your filth. Everyone has made mistakes. For some, there are little, uh, for some, there are there's little to no public awareness. Uh, others, more and more people have seen their failure because it has been publicized. Just because God did not expose your dirt does not make you better than anyone else. Just because your pain may have been front stage, can't place it behind you. People can fail in many ways. They can fail professionally, personally, spiritually, financially. There is weight when we continue to carry our baggage. No matter if you found yourself losing a job or Maybe you found yourself having a, a failure of a, a, a marriage or a relationship. Maybe you found yourself backsliding every now and then. Financially, you find yourself in high levels of debt and unable to meet your payments and obligations. That can weigh on you. But one of the things you have to understand, it is now time for you to cast your cares, pain, fears, and failures on to Christ. There's no need for you to worry. There's no need for you to stress. There's no need for you to doubt. Understand that he has a divine plan and purpose for you. Christ desires the best for you, my friend. So I pray that you will seek him, that you will trust him, that you will put everything that has been holding you back behind you. I hope these truths have encouraged you. It is my prayer that you continue to grow in your relationship with your creator. Spend some time in both prayer and study daily and watch his presence and favor manifest in your life. May you grow and thrive in Christ Jesus. Moving to the world of business. There were several stories that appeared in the news this past week that I would like to highlight and spend some time uh, providing commentary on. The first story involves the National Football League filing opposition to the XFL's human, I mean, Houston Roughnecks logo. Uh, definitely there were some during this last past XFL season, which is now owned by Dwayne The Rock Johnson, felt that there was a strong resemblance between the, the Houston Roughnecks logo and that of the former uh, Houston Oilers that are now the Tennessee uh, Titans. So the NFL has filed opposition to the XFL being able to use that logo. The one thing that we will find in the world of business is that people love to protect their intellectual property and their desires that people do not use or come up on their intellectual property. I feel that the NFL is justified in opposing the use of the, of the Houston Roughnecks logo, but I will also point out that there are definitely some distinct differences between the two logos that I'm sure will come out uh, in the trial, but maybe this will be a settlement that the two uh, leagues will come to. This past week, there was definitely a war with big tech as they put a move on parlor, uh, on parlor uh, the free uh, social media app that prided itself on free speech favored by many on the right. Uh, and what we saw with big tech is they possibly destroyed the company's chances of success. Uh, but what was interesting is that as Twitter uh, banned President Donald Trump from uh, being able to use their site, 
uh, Parler jumped to number one on the App Store. What's also interesting is that there were reports that Donald Trump was on the Parler app, but for those who searched uh, Parler, you would see or you did not quite see anything that truly indicated that President Trump was on that site. And as a result of this battle that was uh, raging over the past weekend with big tech and Parler, um, and, and Parler we saw that there was calls once again to break up big tech. Interesting, on Monday, uh, January 11th, Twitter lost $5 billion in their market cap value after kicking Donald Trump off the site. Uh, so that was definitely something that was very interesting. I, I thought that the move that Twitter made to ban Donald Trump is definitely dangerous when you look at free speech. You may not agree with him, but I do think we who are believers, this is something we should be leery of because I feel that there may be some people who may try to silence the church and may say that some of the positions held by Bible-believing Bible individuals are hate speech. So those in the church have to be careful about cheering on uh, the forced silencing of dissenting views. This is something that we see happen quite often on a, a college campuses. Uh, when we have people that say they pride themselves on diversity, equity, and inclusion, uh, but they don't consider diversity, equity, and inclusion to be diverse perspectives. I may not agree with you, but that should not give me the right to silence your ignorant thought patterns. I personally feel that the best ideas will be the ideas that will win out over time. I always say you can tell a person who does not have a legitimate argument because those that do not have a legitimate argument are those that tend to be overly emotional uh, and cannot stick to the facts. After the Capitol protests, uh, Twitter has suspended some 70,000 user accounts in the US. Uh, so a lot of people are calling this the great Twitter uh, purge, uh, where they're definitely removing accounts. Not quite sure how many of these accounts were truly used uh, in regards to setting up the U.S. Capitol protests that took place on last week. But there are, uh, there is definitely a move by uh, strong uh, big tech companies to try to bring things under control. Uh, but we'll see if this will continue or if this chatter will just move to other sources uh, and ways of spreading. An interesting story that came out on uh, Monday, January 11th, this was really after Twitter's loss of $5 billion in market, cap, in market cap value, was Amazon, Facebook, Google, and Microsoft all came out and each announced that they have paused political contributions after the U.S. Capitol protest. We will see if this will hold in two or four years. At this point, all the elections are over. So you suspending or placing a pause on political contributions is really a meaningless gesture at this time. If you were truly trying to show that you were not biased, you probably would not have been providing funds to anyone running from office. But, you know, I do not fault these companies because one of the things we also know is that, you know, big business is a special interest. And their goal and desire is to put people in office that are going to come up with favorable laws uh, to the way they do business. And it's going to be interesting uh, to see what comes of big tech. Uh, but definitely you're starting to see calls of uh, those on the right uh, talking about breaking up Facebook and, and some of these big tech conglomerates. But there are some people on the left that also feel that these companies should be broken up uh, because of how they treat their, uh, their staff, their employees, 
of the power they possess. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the future. Uh, but I will say a, a pause after the political season has come to an end is really a meaningless gesture at this time. Uh, I think we'll be interesting to see if when we get to 2022 or 2024, when we are once again in the heights of an election season, will these companies continue to not give uh, political contributions? Moving to business principle, strategy, best practice, or recommendation, uh, something that I would like to discuss this week is career and or project derailment. Uh, one of the things that you will find is the longer you uh, live, the longer you are engaged in your career, uh, chances of having a career de uh, derailment increases. There have been many careers that have come crashing down at the height of an individual's career summit. And, and there are many reasons why this occurs, and I'm not going to peel back the, the onion as to why people see their careers derailed, derailed. But one of the things I will like to talk about are some steps uh, that you can take to avoid the pitfalls that lead to a career derailment. Uh, one of the first things that I think a lot of people that find themselves engaged in uh, uh, having a project or their career derailed uh, many times is a lack of self-awareness. So in order to prevent yourself from finding uh, your career derailed, uh, one needs to make sure that they're enhancing their self-awareness, that they understand uh, how others see them, how others view them. Uh, they have a sense of understanding of their strengths and weaknesses. This is key in terms of avoiding the pitfalls uh, that tend to lead to derailment. And also one needs to be honest with their work and life circumstances. I think a lot of leaders, both in the church and in secular society, lack authenticity. And as a result of lacking authenticity, it results in their failure and their derailment of their life and their career and their family. And many times this is also related to them not willing uh, to receive feedback. So in order to enhance one's self, uh, uh, self-awareness, you have to be willing to receive feedback. You have to be honest about what's going on in both your life and career. Know what you're good at, what you're not good at, and, and try to avoid engaging in things that you are, are not good at. Also, you have to have a growth mindset. If you do not have a growth mindset, if you're not striving to consistently get better and to improve, your chances of derailment increase. Be honest with, uh, with the relationships you have. Uh, you know, if you lack poor relationships with your supervisor, uh, with your colleagues, with your direct reports, uh, all of this can lead to long-term, or, or should I say short-term career uh, derailment. So you need to make sure that you know what your suppliers need, what your clients and customer needs are, as well as what those in your family are expecting from you. And also find yourself involving your direct reports, be engaged in participative uh, decision-making. Try to make sure that you're hearing from all voices, not just the loudest voices in the room, because sometimes the loudest voices in the room can be wrong. And uh, try to uh, become more politically astute. Learn to read the room and study the environment and know what people are saying and what people are not saying. Uh, because if you can read the room politically, you increase your long-term ch uh, long chances of success. And maintain a strong work-life balance. As I stated, many careers uh, find themselves derailed for a variety of reasons. But I, I feel if you apply uh, some of the things that we just uh, went over, you can increase your chances of being successful. One of the hallmarks of any successful organization is an ability to know their data. How is your team at reading key performance indicators? Do you know when you need to act? 
Do you know when you need to purchase new product? Uh, have you spent time developing predictive analytics? Our team of experts can work with your leaders to develop dashboards that will show you how your company is currently performing in real time. The Canis Consulting Group has a team of well-trained coaches and consultants with C-suite experience that are available to assist you and your leadership team. We have membership plans designed to fit any budget or size organization. Allow us to assist you in, align in aligning your human capital with organizational strategy. Our platinum membership features weekly coaching along with additional perks and benefits such as a growth circle membership, monthly gifts, an on-call human resources consultant, an on-call marketing and branding consultant, monthly webinars, and more. Now is not the time to hire an amateur, bring in the experts, and allow us to help bring your plans into focus. For more information or a no-fee consultation, please call our offices at 1-800-418-5350. That number, once again, 1-800-418-5350. Moving to the world of health and education, uh, there were several stories that I would like to highlight. Uh, we saw this past week, the Ohio governor has come out and signed a law that is now requiring either burial or cremation or cremation of all aborted babies. Uh, definitely, it's going to be interesting to see uh, if this will be a deterrent, uh, but definitely uh, we do see uh, that this is a law that recently has been passed, that any baby that's aborted in Ohio will be required to be buried and or cremated. Uh, a related story, uh, there was a uh, study that came out and uh, showed that the number of abortion clinics and the United States has declined by 35% since 2009. Yes, we hear that there's a lot of talk on a woman's right to choose, and this seems to be a hot button issue every election season when it comes to abortion, but it does appear that there are less abortions taking place or the number of clinics in the United States has decreased. 14 alleged uh, Chinese secret agents were apprehended in 2020 uh, working for U.S. colleges and universities. I thought this was a very interesting story when you look at the world of higher education, where we do know we have a lot of students uh, from China come over to get their graduate degrees. Uh, many times these individuals are hired on H-1B-1 visas uh, to work, and it it's interesting to see uh, that you know espionage uh, tends to tends to happen at colleges. Uh, Fourteen is a small number, uh, but definitely I think when you look at the number of people that are employed at colleges and universities. Uh, but I do think that this is a story that we may need to watch uh, the more we um, look at what's happening in the world of higher education in terms of. Uh, uh, hiring and bringing in immig immigrant faculty members and or students. We do know that a lot of uh, international students have found themselves being isolated and unable to come to the states as a result of COVID-19, but it's going to be interesting to see moving forward if we're still going to have issues uh, with international student visas uh, as well as work visas being offered to uh, foreign nationals. Uh, an interesting story that I saw that was interesting was looking at Christian college president turnover. And what it was showing is that the turnover at Christian uh, colleges is similar to that of non-religious colleges, such as your state uh, funded institution. So it does appear that the job of a college presidency is very stressful and many people are finding uh, the turnover to uh, be high and people not having 
long tenures in the job of a college president at Christian uh, colleges and universities. In terms of book recommendations, the book that I would like to recommend this week is The Effective Executive, The Definitive Guide to Getting the Right Things Done. And this book is by Peter F. Drucker. Uh, I believe I, well, I guess I do not, oh, here it is. So yes, here is the book, The Effective Executive. It's by Peter Drucker. Uh, definitely, if you have a hard time managing your time, that is definitely a read I recommend that you pick up and read and see how you can become more effective in your job. Moving to the world of church and nonprofits, uh, a couple of stories that I found uh, just amazing information. We do know that 2020 saw Tons of churches forced to close their doors uh, because there was uh, no indoor worship being allowed. Uh, we have seen that uh, the Supreme Court has ruled on behalf of quite a few churches. So now we're starting to see that indoor worship is being offered in various states and very city in various cities and lo uh, locales. Uh, but one of the interesting data points that was not highlighted or you may be unaware of, and we do thank LifeWay Christian Resources for providing us with this information, and that information is that during the COVID-19 pandemic, we have seen a significant increase in the number of Bibles that have been purchased. And so what I find intriguing is that these are actually hard physical uh, Bibles, leather bound, paperback, hardback Bibles. We do know that there is the Bible app that's available on many phones. You may have it on your phone, but hard Bible uh, purchases have increased, which reveals, I think that we are seeing a lot of people seeking the truth that is found in scripture. So that's wonderful, uh, wonderful news. And I think should have all believers excited to hear that. But on the other hand, there's also some negative news that I saw this week in terms of the church. And that was that 2,400 Nigerian Christians are, have been reported to have been hacked to death uh, in 2020. So we're looking at 2,400 Nigerian Christians have been murdered for their faith in God. I think we in the American church, we here in the church in America, uh, tend to forget that, you know, our religious freedom and liberties that we have are not available to many of our brothers and sisters in other uh, areas of the world. So we have to consistently pray for them. We need to advocate on behalf of them uh, that they are not finding uh, such violent ends to their lives as a result of the hatred that's out there for Christians. The Chinese communist government is also increasing its pressure and stance against the church in Hong Kong. Uh, we do know that this is something that is prevalent uh, in communist China and a lot of dictatorships, they do not love, they do not like the church. They're not fans of the church. They're trying to do all they can to suppress worship and a desire for people to know that there is a creator, that there is a God that loves them. So we have to once again advocate for our religious freedoms and liberties. There are going to be people that are going to try to shut us down in terms of being able to worship and celebrate our God. But we have to do all we can to make sure that we carry the message of Jesus, the Christ, to the masses, that they are aware that there was someone who loved them enough that he died and gave his life for them. And we have to do all we can uh, to support our brothers and sisters. Uh, the Supreme Court is scheduled to hear an appeal of a ruling that requires a charities or nonprofits in California to hand over to the state the names of major donors. One may ask what constitutes a major donor, 
And, and why do they feel the need to know this information in terms of who's giving uh, contributions to various nonprofits? It's going to be interesting to see how the Supreme Court rules on this. Uh, but I, I do think this is a story uh, that we need to keep our eyes on uh, to see if, uh, if we'll see some positive traction in protecting charities and nonprofits and their donors' identity. Strong donor relationships will be critical to sustained support in 2021. Would your organization benefit from a 20 to 25% increase next year, or this year, I should say? It is now time for your team to develop goals for growth and progression. Our team of highly skilled fundraising, advancement, and development consultants at the KNS Consulting Group can work with your team to assess your systems and assist you in developing a strategy that will get you back on track. For a no-fee consultation, please contact our offices at 1-800-418-5350. Once again, that number, 1-800-418-5350. We're here to help and assist you. Moving to the world of politics. Pennsylvania House Representative Mike Reese died of an apparent brain aneurysm. Uh, this is definitely sad news. Uh, we did go over last week how we heard that uh, hip hop icon, uh, Dr. Dre was hospitalized uh, with a brain aneurysm. And, you know, I think the story, we definitely pray and offer our condolences to uh, the family of uh, Representative uh, Mike Reese. But it reminds me just how blessed I am. I had a cousin a couple of years ago who suffered a brain uh, brain aneurysm who had to have uh, multiple emergency surgeries. And, you know, the fact that God spared her life lets me realize when I read stories like that, just how fortunate and blessed we are that she's still amongst the land of the living. And uh, definitely we do pray for that family. Reports came out that Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip have received their COVID-19 va vaccinations. Uh, also, we have already covered it. There were tons of uh, protests, some will say riots, uh, some use are labeling it insurrection uh, that happened at the, the Capitol on last week. And the one thing that I will say on this uh, is that our nation has been divided and it has been divided for quite some time. Uh, rhetoric, the words we speak, there is power behind the things that we speak. But we as believers need to be aware that God is going to hold us accountable for every idle word and meaningless meme we post uh, or repost or share. Uh, we need to make sure that we're making every effort to build people up and not to tear anyone down. And as a result of what's going on, uh, the House Democrats have introduced impeachment articles against Trump. Uh, for inciting a capital attack. I personally feel that this is meaningless. He'll be out of office next week. And I think what we're seeing here is that it's all about political gamesmanship and not, doing a, not being about the people's business. We still have people who have not worked since March and we're more concerned about impeaching the president as opposed to getting meaningful legislation passed. You know, I can care less about your views of Donald Trump. Uh, what I'm more concerned about is why we send people to state capitals and to Washington, D.C., but they seem to never be able to reach agreement or make decisions that are for the betterment of the American people. They go to office, they leave office, they're more enriched uh, and, and more wealthy than they were when they entered, when they leave but we still have people that are hurting and struggling. And going to the Bible in your vote, uh, you know, you can go and read Matthew 
uh, 12, 22 to 25, where we know what happens with a house divided. And I think it becomes very clear that a nation divided shall not stand. But I think this is what you're going to continue to have division uh, when you try to embrace a pluralistic society. When you have people that are on polar opposite ends, uh, people may say, well, how can these people coexist? Uh, it, it is very rare that we find people able to agree to disagree. I think it's a human condition where people try to force people to agree with their points. Uh, the more perspectives that are introduced into the equation make it difficult for everyone to agree. Uh, when there's division, it's easy for it to be exploited. And I think looking at our nation being as divided as it is, I can feel, I feel that we're going to see people come in. It may be uh, foreign uh, adversaries. It may even be people in our own nation that may try to come in to exploit this division for their own personal enrichment. And we in the church have to understand that God intends the church to be a place of refuge and encouragement and not political partisan rhetoric. I think the church truly allowed ourselves to get divided and engaged in a detrimental matter in this past presidential election. And, and we need to be cognizant of that fact. Uh, we must continue to point people back to the truths found in Christ. Not everyone is going to accept his truths, but once we have shared, all we can do is understand that we have done our job and it's up to them uh, to accept. The strategic alignment of your people with organizational strategy is important to, to the success of your organization. It is imperative that your team stays current and up to date on changes in the law. Human resources, regulations, and laws change regularly. And for most small businesses and entrepreneurs, it's hard to stay current on changes while building and maintaining a successful business. The Canis Consulting Group is your solution. The Canis Consulting Group has a team of highly trained and up-to-date human resources consultants available to assist your team at a moment's notice. For more information, please call our offices at one 800 418-5350. Once again, our number is 1-800-418-5350. Uh, just some major news highlights that I thought were interesting. Uh, there was a report that Tom Selleck, the actor, uh, tipped a waitress $2,020. Uh, definitely, I think that was very nice of him. It was very caring and loving of him. Uh, and definitely kudos to Tom Selleck. There was also a report that, um, that a man returned $43,000 he found in an old couch. And he stated once he was returning it, uh, when asked that that was something that he felt Jesus would have done. Uh, in the state of California, a new COVID-19 travel advisory has been uh, released and essentially it is restricting Californians, uh, uh, inviting them or telling them to stay within 120 miles of their home. Now moving to this week's Coach's Corner, career and personal derailment have been a reality for many. Today, many individuals have not worked since March. Jobs have been lost. Families have been broken. Marriages are close to ending. People have forgotten how to smile and enjoy life. For others, they may be working, but in the back of their mind, fear is crouching, scratching, and making a move toward their peace and well-being. Are you ready to engage with purpose and destiny? You may be thinking to yourself, I'm just trying to survive this quarter. Let me make quota this month. Focusing on on the weeds never truly brings the best out of us. Christian life coaches come with an understanding that God has a divine plan and assignment for everyone. This helps them to look for the best in their clients. Trained and equipped with a coaching model that is built on keeping Christ at the center of their coaching engagements, 
allows for Christian life coaches to assist their clients in achieving personal greatness. Our coaches at the Canis Consulting Group are members of the Christian Coaching Alliance. If you are unsure of the benefits of a coach and would like to see how one can assist you in both your personal and professional preparation, the Canis Consulting Group's associate plan may be right for you. For only $500 a month, you can receive monthly coaching. For more information or a no-fee consultation of our coaching experience, a test drive, if you will, please call our offices at 1-800-418-5350. Once again, our number, 1-800-418-5350. Moving to career advice, the one thing that I would like to remind you uh, or inform you of is it's important to understand that length of service or years in business is not a guarantee for professional competence. Just because someone has so many years of work experience or just because someone comes to you, a vendor comes to you and tell you that you should sh choose them as your supplier because they have been in business a collective of however many years, that does not guarantee that they are competent, that they're gonna be able to meet your needs. So I think you have to do your due diligence to truly make sure that any potential vendor, any potential uh, uh, employee uh, truly will be able to meet the needs and get things done according to what they're telling you uh, they can produce. Has your job search stalled? Our team of talented resume writers and career coaches at the Canis Consulting Group may be able to assist you in breathing life into your job search. If it has been a while since you have been had an interview, please send your, please send your current resume to our team for an evaluation of the effectiveness of your current resume and selling your strengths. Contact our offices at 1-800-418-5350 once again, our number 1-800-418-5350. Moving to announcements. It is almost Sunday. It is now time for you to go from blessings to greater blessings. Greater Blessings San Bernardino and Greater Blessings Ecclesiastical Fellowship International invite you to attend service at one of our locations this Sunday. You can worship online or in person. Greater Blessing San Bernardino is located at 254 South Mount Vernon uh, in the city of San Bernardino. On January 29th and January 30th, the Canis Consulting Group's Virtual Church Planters Intensive Boot Camp will take place. This program is designed for anyone looking to launch or plant a church within the next six months. Uh, to register, uh, you can call one 800 418-5350. Once again, our number 1-800-418-5350. February 6, 2021, Kayana's Consulting Group's Next Growth Circle for Entrepreneurs. Registration is now open. For more information, you can call 1-800-418-5350. Once again, to register, uh, you can call 1-800-418-5350. And on February 26th, the Candace Consulting Group's Entrepreneurial Boot Camp will take place. This is designed for anyone that's looking to start a business within the next six months. A registration is now open. And for more information, you can call 1-800-418-5350. Once again, the number 1-800-418-5350. I hope you have found this week's podcast to be informative, encouraging, and noteworthy. Once again, I invite you to like, follow, subscribe, comment, and or share. Help us to get the word out. I pray that the favor of God shines upon you and on your organization this week. May clients come from the East, the West, the North, and the South. May you and your family go from blessings to greater blessings. Until next week, it is my prayer that you will be blessed. God bless you.